motor centripetal switch here. Basically what this does is when the motor spins up, it kicks the uh, start capacitor out. This is a start, well, yeah, it's a start AC induction motor, start capacitor AC induction motor. When the motor spins up to about 75 to 80 percent of its speed, these little weights here sling out and they allow these contacts to lift up and that's what takes the start capacitor on the motor out. So these fling out, you'll hear it when it goes click like that and when you first plug it in or start it up and then when you shut it off it'll go, you'll hear that. So uh, yeah there's little contacts here, uh, copper contacts, I'm sure they got beryllium in them to keep them from sparking. If these go bad uh, don't try sanding on them. Yeah that's a good temporary fix but they'll just arc burn again and uh, become unusable and beryllium is a, a really bad carcinogenic if you breathe that shit in well count on having lung cancer so so basically what it does is this thing's spinning real fast all of a sudden centrifugal acce uh, acceleration and pops that up and the, the start capacitor is out of the circuit when it uh, stops then these fall back inward and it's ready to go again so uh, that's how that works. So I'll zoom you in real close here and you can see these little contacts and I'll put the uh, multimeter on it here and you can hear continuity. So here's where the... It's just a switch folks, there's nothing to it. A centrif centrifugal switch. <laughs> it works off uh, centripetal acceleration and it slings them, you know, these weights outward. So let's put it in the continuity mode here. And see, now you should be able to hear that buzz. So when I uh, swing these weights out, we got no more buzz. So that means the uh, start capacitor is out of circuit, and that's a good thing because uh, the start capacitor is not 100% duty cycle like a run capacitor. And when uh, these go back in, you got continuity again. So. Those are, those are closed by default before you start the motor up and you should be able to remove the capacitor. You don't have to remove the capacitor. You can check for continuity across the capacitor leads and you should have continuity when it's off. If you got that when it's off then you get a problem. So uh, yeah, uh, the run capacitors are 100% duty cycle and that's the reason they're in a the metal can and oil. Of course, they'll also be at a lower farad rating than the start capacitors. The start ca uh, capacitors are usually polypropylene. You leave them in for more than a couple seconds, and they'll uh, well, they'll get smoke, spew oil, blow the guts out of them. I've seen them catch on fire before too, so it smokes them pretty good. So this is basically saves the start capacitor and it opens up, and then when it goes back closed, click. So we got continuity. That's all that does, real simple. So we'll go ahead and put the motor back together here and uh, get it back to running. So let me turn this off. There we go. So that's all she wrote. Yeah, here's one of the bearings. The other bearings underneath this uh, uh, start capacitor or the centrifugal switch, and here's your uh, rotor part that spins, and that's what uh, the field windings cause us to rotate, and that's where you get your movement from. So, not really all that hard to figure out. Let me expand a little bit on what's happening to that rotor. In the motor you got your run winding and your start winding and of course you got that rotor there which is made of like thin metal sections to reduce eddy currents. If you've ever seen an inductor, someone use one of those on a bolt to free up a nut or something to break it loose. Well if it wasn't made of real thin laminate sections uh, to reduce eddy currents you'd basically that, turn that rotor into a massive rotating molten metal. <laughs> it, it would heat that up red hot and melt it down. So that's basically, if you look at a transformer, the ferrite core that strengthens the magnetic field, well those are made in real thin strips, right? Well that's to reduce eddy currents because if it weren't, it was all one piece of iron, 
or metal, then the magnetic field would induce eddy currents onto that, and a lot of them, and it would heat that up and melt it down. So that's the reason you have those real thin uh, plates in there. Okay, when the motor first starts up, it can't move because in this case it only has two poles, right, a north and a south. Think of that as at the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position. And the motor, when it first starts up, kind of gets stuck there. It's not a rotating magnetic field, but on single phase. So what they do is they stick a capacitor in there and that causes a phase shift. So you're creating an artificial second phase and it's shifting. So now you have a, uh, a poles at 12, 6, 3, and 9. It only needs that for like, you know, until the motor gets up to 75 to 80 percent and it kicks the capacitor out and then momentum takes over from there as long as it's in kind of a medium to low torque application. The motor will just keep running on its own without the capacitor. You don't need to run capacitor for this uh, small motor here. The field winding is creating this due to AC rising and falling. It's, create, it's cutting across the uh, conductors on that rotor and it's inducing a current and if you got a current then you got anytime you have current flowing through a conductor you've got a magnetic field being generated now the field on the rotor is the exact opposite of what the run winding is generating in, in the outer part and that is chasing the field windings magnetic field around and around and around and around now it can't catch it because if it catches it and it, that's called synchronous speed if it catches it that field is no longer cutting across those inductors quite right and you have literally zero torque so the motor will just stall so it has to have what they call some amount of slippage percentage of slippage in there to uh, keep that uh, rotor rotating this is the answer to what they used to call I uh, see I don't think they're well they're still around they still use them repulsion induction motor hit you it's kind of like a DC motor it has brushes and a com commentator this is the answer to that because this motor doesn't use brushes it's using induction to run itself no commentator and no brushes to wear out so this is a lot better solution to the old repulsion induction motor hopefully that makes sense basically you're using induction like on a transformer field cuts across the conductors on the rotor and creates an opposite and equal magnetic field and that chases the run winding around and around and that's creating your movement hopefully that makes sense and i didn't overcomplicate things